every Arsenal fan's worst nightmare has come true. And that happened last night in an international game with the Arsenal captain, Martin Odegaard. When will Edu and Mikel Arteta and the Conques learn their lesson? I'm Ty Knight here for TK24 Sports. If you're new to the show, like, subscribe, turn the notification on so you don't miss the show every time you upload. Let's get into this one very quickly. Martin Odegaard got injured last night with his ankle, but he was able to walk off the pitch. But all is not what it seems. So the Norway uh, manager came out and said it looks really, really bad. Now, nothing, no one's come out and said how long he's going to be out for. But in my guess, with this sort of injury, he's going to miss the next three games for sure. The one against Spurs, the one against At Atalanta, and the one against Manchester City. And they're all away games. And this is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy for Arsenal to recover from this because they have no backup in this position. You can't turn around and say Kai Havertz because guess what's happened? Declan Rice obviously got suspended or sent off, shall I say, so he misses this game against Spurs, which is coming up this weekend. But Martin Odegaard, this is going to be, I think, a quite a, an injury that's going to be sidelined him for about a month and a half easily. And now everyone will be saying, why didn't we go and get Eze? We should have always had a backup. But if we didn't sell Smith Rowe and we didn't loan out Vieira, we wouldn't be in this position. But let me say this. You would have said Smith Rowe is not capable. You would have said Vieira is nowhere near ready and capable to help Arsenal. So let's scrap those two plays out of the way and let's focus on this one. Eze was up for sale and Eze would have been a good reinforcement there for Martin Odegaard. So should our Odegaard get injured, it wouldn't be a problem. But this is where it gets worse for Arsenal now. Not just this injury, but Moreno, when it, Arsenal bought him, he got injured in training, so he's out. People, again, Arsenal have come out and said, about three to four months, I'm telling you, he's going to be out until January, the earliest. Odegaard's missing. It, a month, a month and a half it's going to be. So that's two players that Arsenal need to rely on. Declan White, suspended for this tapping the ball misses the North London derby. So when you think of it, there's three players and two of them we, we can say is key. We can't say Marino yet because we haven't seen him play for Arsenal. But two key players are already missing for two big games out of the three that's coming up out of the international break. Arsenal do not have the reinforcements. The likelihood if Arsenal can get a draw against Spurs, if Arsenal can get three draws in these next three games, they have done marvellously well. Thomas Partey's on his last leg. Jorginho hasn't really played yet this season. So his legs are going to be all over the place against this in this North London derby. Is he going to be able to step up and do something? Kai Havertz, OK, he scored a goal in the international break, but what's he going to do? Because he's not going to be playing up front. He's going to be playing in the left side of midfield for sure. Jesus up front. But now there's no other strikers, is there? You can look at it and say, well, there's Trossard. You've got Martinelli. You've got Sterling now. you still got Saka. So there are players that can come in, and Nenweri, he can come in as well. But you have other players in the background who can actually help out. But Calafori limped out, and he got sent home to Arsenal for an injury. And this is what happens. Even when you've got so many superstars or stars in your team, they go away to international breaks, and they too can still get injured. So while everyone will be coming out and saying, if we had more backup, more backup, if you buy quality players, Quality players will get caught up at international duty, so there's always a risk. So I'm not crying because he got injured on international duty, and there's no, I'm just crying that there's no actual backup. Now, even if you bought Eze, Eze still gets called up for England, so there's a risk there as well. So sometimes if you're thinking irrationally, think rationally and start thinking about what you're going to say before you say it. Hence why you don't see me going too mad, I'm just saying, They'll never learn. But to be fair, how can they learn? How can they go forward knowing that if you still buy superstars, stars, there's a point of that they can get injured when they go away for their national team as well. And should old, should have Odegaard got injured in a North London derby, you still would be moaning anyway because there's still no one there to come in and replace, come in and deputise, come in and do a performance that still helps Arsenal with their goals and targets to lift the Premier League after two years of trying against Manchester City. This setback is going to be monumental because you now have Liverpool as an emerging threat to Arsenal's campaign. And Odegaard going missing, the main player 
who actually pulls things together, who is the glue of the team, is not going to be there. But, but it doesn't mean that Arsenal still can't prevail. It doesn't mean that Arsenal still can't perform. It just doesn't mean that Arsenal do not have a chance of beating Spurs, Atalanta and Manchester City because Odegaard is not there. A lot of people have already been saying this season that Odegaard has been missing. So if he's missing, injured, what's the difference? It means other players get a turn, other players get to show up and show out as to who they are. And that's the part where Arsenal fans and Arsenal have to think about this. It's now, is this now the time where you show up and show out? You've got the opportunity, go out there, take it, play your game. Don't try and play the way that Odegaard plays. Don't try and play the way that Declan Rice plays. Play your game, but make your game elevate to the point where we don't recognise you no more because you have now come out of your shell. And now's the time to do it. Now's the time for fans to get started getting composed and not be negative, going on Twitter, having a rant, and start saying, this is why the club's rubbish. They don't learn. This is Arteta's fault. This is Eddie's fault. Yes, I made my opening statement, but that is just an opening title. Nothing more. I need you guys to watch the show. Now you're watching. Let's be rational about this and start thinking how Arsenal can get through to get can get past Spurs, past Atlanta, and past Manchester City because it is very very possible. It's going to be hard. Every game is going to be hard. Even if we had Rice, even if we had Odegaard, we would still need them for the for them to show up and show out. Anyway, that's it. Until we actually hear the news that he's going to be out for a couple of weeks, that's all you're going to hear. It was just a minor knock. It was a minor injury, but it's not. It's going to be quite long-term, a month to month and a half until you see Martin Odegaard back on the pitch for Arsenal. Hey, I'm Ty Knight here for TK24 Sports. Again, if you're new to the show, like, subscribe, turn that notification on so you don't, you don't miss a show every time we upload. Have a great day. See you later.